wiring is time intensive, but despite the relative complexity, can be done by anybody with a little bit of patience. Now that we have all the parts installed, it's time to start. I have a pile of wires here ranging in conductor count and gauge for every part of this machine. These multi-conductor wires have individually colored conductors, so as long as we properly mark the locations of the wires, it's just a matter of properly associating the colors. To simplify it, we have our heaviest gauge for conductor wires for all the stepper motors and the spindle. We have light gauge in conductor counts of three, four, and six for the homing sensors, stepper encoders, as well as alarms and switches. There's some two conductor power wire in two different gauges for supplying DC power to the controller and the stepper drivers. And finally, some three conductor wire for supplying AC power to the power supplies and VFD. We are using shielded wire in some places to isolate the sensory from the high frequency power sent out by the VFD to the spindle. I'm going to start by roughing all the longest cables. I always start with the longest runs and that way if you cut something too short you can still use that wire somewhere else. The wires run from the stepper drivers mounted at the front of the machine and go all the way up the gantry to the z-axis. Some of the cables aren't going all the way up, so I'll cut them at specific points along the way like here on the side where we'll mount the Y-axis motor, as well as down here where we'll mount the X-axis homing switches. After all those runs are labeled, I can begin to make connections at the stepper drivers. Here we go. Here we have most of the wiring up the gantry into the Z-axis all roughed in. I popped off the front panel here with the drivers so I could get rough wire lengths. So everything is all bundled nicely in that braided loom all the way up to the Z-axis and uh, through the gantry there. So all I gotta do is solder up the motors there, solder up the motor down here, hook up my limit switches, and then run everything through cable carriers, mount it, and then last step will be to cut the wires and, and put them into the stepper drivers once I know the more or less exact length. Uh, I'll leave a little bit extra so I always have serviceability. I can just pop this pant off, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, be able to access the drivers whenever I need. So I'll leave a little bit of slack there. Also roughed in all the water cooler lines and coolant lines, so for misting and stuff like that. Uh, the spindle we're using is water cooled, so two of the lines are just for the, the spindle. But yeah, there she is. Bit more progress today that was probably three hours to get her to that point but it's looking good next we will install the y-axis drive screw for the final time so we can install the motor and drive coupler this installation was a little finicky but we got it sorted the bearing inside the floating bearing assembly needed a little adjustment to get the holes to line up the motor can then be installed with some modification to the coupler this wouldn't have been necessary but i bought the wrong size this is the last of the motors to be installed, so once it's in place, I can start stripping wires and begin the lengthy task of making all the electrical connections. We are using closed loop NEMA 34 stepper motors on this machine. There are four in total, with two driving the gantry. Closed loop stepper motors provide feedback to the drivers to ensure the commanded motor position is provided. It does this with an encoder mounted to the back of the stepper motor, reading and relaying the position back to the driver. If a misstep is detected, the driver will attempt a commanded correction to the motor in however many steps it has determined were missed. If it is unable to achieve compliance for reasons such as motor overloading or some electrical issue, the driver will throw an alarm and no longer attempt to move the motors. We will be wiring this alarm signal back to the controller, so in the event of an issue, the whole machine is brought to a stop and an alarm code is displayed on the controller screen. This is a really nice safety feature and will protect the machine and spindle from severe overloading. Today got the last little bit of the wires installed, got them run through some cable carriers up there and down there. This one's just sitting on a piece of wood that's just temporary until I get a bracket fabbed up. Uh, started soldering up some of the motors so that one's done. That's the y-axis motor screw we got installed today too, it's underneath there. A bit more work has to happen to the Z-axis assembly before I start soldering wires up there. 
but getting pretty close. So they're all roughed in, ran all the way here so I can start cutting them to length, installing them onto the stepper drivers here, and then up to the controller. We whipped up this bracket from some more laser cut plate to mount the controller. <laughs> and it'll be fine for wiring until we replace it. So each of the stepper motors requires 10 individual conductors. Six for the encoder and four for positioning. The drivers will have a total of 18 connections made. Two for the DC power to the driver, 10 from the driver to the motors, two for the alarm signals back to the controller, and four for the controller demanded signal to the driver. That's a whopping 72 individual connections to these four drivers. Wiring is now complete. All the stepper drivers are completely wired up. I wired up the alarms as well. I'm gonna tie those into the controller so that if there's an alarm state that just shuts the whole machine down, Everything's packaged up, zip tied. Went through about a pack of zip ties doing redoing, so that's all done. I'm gonna button up that front panel and then just have to make connections inside the controller and add, just tie in my uh, end stop switches. These are just uh, inductive um, magnetic switches that'll get installed on each axis for homing and end stop limits. So those just have to be soldered up. The wires are already in place. And that is pretty much the end of the wiring. This whole bundle of cords goes down to the VFD and the power supplies and any relays that I decide to install. So that's sort of waiting for the stand to be in place. I'm really excited about this controller. It is an all-in-one unit from Meso with a 15 inch touchscreen. That means we will not need a computer or even a keyboard and mouse to run this machine. It's all packed in this nice little product and run by Meso's control software. The system has excellent specs and a plethora of inputs and outputs to control everything from the VFD, water and coolant pumps, to automatic oiling systems. It boasts a 10 second startup time and even Wi-Fi connectivity to receive code files wirelessly from a PC. I've attached a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. I got the controller wired up today. Pretty happy with that. It's all wired up, went through the setup. Got all the individual sensors plugged in and associated, so those are all done. I uh, gave it temporary power there. There'll be permanent power underneath somewhere, but until I get it off the scaffolding and onto its proper stand, which still needs to be powder coated, um, that's just kind of temporary, but yeah. Everything's good. All the outputs at the bottom are ready to hook up to the uh, driver power supply and the VFD. So those will go underneath, but other than that, yeah, we're all set up. So, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I haven't had much time to play around with it at all. I just basically went through and associated all the inputs. Uh, I kind of flipped through some of the screens just to familiarize myself with them a little bit. The buttons and stuff look familiar to what I'm kind of used to with Mach 3. So I don't think there's going to be a huge challenge as far as learning how to use it. The touchscreen works really nicely. It's responsive, jumps around, no delay in the hardware at all. So looks great. Very excited to get to give it a shot. Unfortunately, we are going to have to remove the Y-axis assembly to finalize some of the installations. We need to add a bracket to the Y-axis for the cable carrier, as well as install a homing sensor here in the Z-axis. Both of these are just much easier to do with the parts off the machine. We will also install our spindle, starting by drilling the holes in the spindle mount to line up with the hole spacing we have cut into our plates. While it's on the mill, we'll also machine the back of this cast piece to get the mating surface nice and parallel with the spindle. Here we go, controller installed, everything wired up, all the motors working. Mo well, I was gonna say most of the drives connected, but actually just one drive connected, we'll get the other two connected tomorrow. It's just a simple bracket that needs to be installed. 
but everything moves. Tested all the motors through the controller, they all turn. So the gantry and the Y axis should be hooked up to that fairly soon. Z axis works, moves real nice. Uh, I've got that all tuned in here for my pulse rates, which I've been playing around with, and the speeds I want. So right now everything's at about 10,000 millimeters per minute as far as the max speed goes. Can actually do up to 20,000 with this pulse rate. So this machine should uh, should move pretty quick. I trusted, tested the travel on this guy. Works good that uh, spindle comes down to about, I don't know, an inch off the table, which I'll probably shift the spindle up a little bit, seeing as that's the case. Uh, and then yeah, all the way up for about eight inches of clearance. So it looks good, cable carriers are in. They look really, really quite nice. I had to make a new uh, track tray for it here. That's just some folded aluminum. But the whole cable carrier rides in that really nice. Made a bracket. For that, everything's loomed nicely. These upper tracks are all in place, connected. Everything's done. Soldered, looking good. Just need some decorative covers on the thing. And the stand for it. And then the rest of the electronics, which is basically just the VFD, power supply, some distribution blocks, a couple relays, and a couple breakers. They're just installed onto this door, which will get attached to the steel lower frame once it comes back from powder coating. So that's the only thing we're waiting on, that's why that's just sort of patched like that. And then I can finalize the rest of it, and then we're going to start playing around with it. Uh, continuous mode, Ooh, e stop, release, okay, should be good to go. Oh, yeah. That's the only moving axis right now, so just been playing around with that. It's kind of nice. Moves quick. Relatively smooth. Do a little bit more tuning, but pretty good. Feels pretty robust, pretty rigid. We don't have too much vibration coming out of those motors, so I am happy with that. The most difficult part of building this machine was doing the wiring. Not difficult, but time intensive. Just slow, but it's all done. Hopefully I don't have to do any more soldering, at least for the time being, so.